Hello and welcome to News 9 Facebook Live with me, Adar Shwe Pachedu. India on Monday conducted a successful test flight of the indigenously developed hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle or the HSTDV. And with this, we've joined an elite group of countries, that is the United States, Russia and China, the um, three other only countries that possess this particular technology. Uh, and in this regard, you even had uh, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh who hailed the test as a great achievement. Now, the HSDTV has a range of uses including missiles of the future for air defence, surveillance and reconnaissance besides even the development of energy efficient, low cost and reusable satellite launch vehicles. Now, it comes in the wake of India acquiring the ability to use a missile to shoot down a satellite in space. This happened last year and uh, demonstrating that the country had acquired submarine based nuclear deterrence capability in the year 2018. Now, to tell us more about how instrumental the missile could be, we have with us retired Wing Commander Praful Bakshi joining us live on the broadcast. Many thanks, sir, for joining us. My first question, it is indeed a big day for DRDO and uh, particularly Make in India. Your thoughts on the successful testing of the HSTDV? Uh, well, my thought on uh, the successful HSTDV uh, is it goes back to... Uh, did a long time because our technology had been, uh, you know, developing for a long time. Especially, uh, it got a special boost when uh, our late President Abdul Kalam was uh, was uh, in the team, and uh, he, you know, put in a lot of effort to bring the in, bring India on a missile map, space map, space vehicle map. All these aspects, uh, India has made a long stride. Probably we are the fourth country in the world mm -hmm. to be to be achieving this distinction what we have done now now the question is this aspect uh, really brings a great strength to india though we may not we may be lagging behind in other fields mm -hmm. but this field certainly which will develop into of course from the from angle of defense uh, very beautifully from angle of space protection against hostile satellites Protection against uh, uh, protection against hostile missiles. All these things, of course, will take place. The tactical apl application is well within our sight now. Missile, uh, we've got ta cru tactical cruise missiles, long-range cruise missiles. All these missiles launched from a high altitude. All these things, of course, will be there. But I'm more than that. Also, there's a lot of application in the civil field, in the uh, space research field. We are thinking in terms of now sending our vehicles into space, uh, traveling of human being into space is not far off. On all these fields, this technology will play a very crucial role. So we must congratulate our team mm -hmm. that they have brought us uh, to a milestone. Yes, you know, sir. this is a historical step, a milestone step for Indian team. You need a milestone for DRDO and especially when it comes to Make in India, Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. It is a step in uh, in the right direction. But again, you were speaking about the uses of uh, the HSTDV Wing Commander. Uh, my question is, uh, how long could it take before the missiles actually reach the defense forces? And where do you see them getting deployed once they are uh, procured by the defense forces? And could it transcend beyond military and into space eventually? You were speaking about space. So, uh, how long before that actually happens and what are the kind of uses that we'll be looking at once it enters the space? Okay, I'll, uh, you can ask me one by one, that'll sure, be better. Sir. Certainly. The question is, first thing is, it'll take a little more time. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we have demonstrated it, there was a demonstrator. And uh, uh, I personally feel the way our team is going, probably next two years, mm -hmm. I give it, uh, I give it uh, time that we'll be able to launch, uh, successfully launch, uh, you know, anti-missile or anti-satellite missile, we can do that. Mm -hmm. You see, now we have certainly demonstrated that a cruise missile can be launched. There's no doubt about it. But there's another application. You see the vessel which carries this, the carriage, which is, that itself, you know, travels uh, when it is released to a long distance. Of course, it can be released from an aircraft. Uh, previously, the de te technology demonstrators have been released from the B-52 bombers and other bombers also. 
taken at 50,000 feet and 60,000 feet and then released. It can be done. But the question is this, uh, the canister which carries the missile it, it by itself, it, is, it, it has a tactical application. It can carry a number of weapons released from an aircraft at a distance and then it opens up by uh, remote control and the controller can then, then release the missiles, various missiles to various targets. This is what it is. So the bomber which is loser, uh, launching the missile does not actually travel. It is uh, it is offset. It remains at 100 to 150 kilometers before the tactical battle area. And uh, it launches this system. That also is an application. Individual cruise missile is an application. And we have already made a great headway in Brembos. And we are uh, further doing it. Now, Brembos is a short-range missile. The, uh, the technology can be uh, married off. The Brembos can be launched from a high altitude or probably a long-range Brembos can be developed. There are a lot of development programs. But most, the most important will be a protection against uh, incoming missiles, anti-missile missile. That application probably would be the most required at the moment because we have no protection against incoming missiles. So on that very note, where do you see them uh, getting deployed, uh, Bakshi Saab? Uh, uh, do you see it getting deployed in the Western frontier? Again, we're talking about limited quantities that we could procure in the beginning. So uh, where could they really go once these vehicles are ready? You see, uh, I, let me not, you know, speak the obvious. Mm -hmm. You know very well, mm -hmm. our threat is from, from make an arc from POK right up to Arunachal. That is an arc where your POK and China are facing us. Correct. <clears throat> that is the main thing. And of course, uh, so is the case in the, on the sea. But the sea, we are pretty strong at the moment. But on the sea, application will be there. Application from the ships will be there. Especially we will be able to keep Chinese Navy at bay. Uh, let's talk very straight. Chinese are already threatening us from the front, from the Ladakh side, they are threatening us uh, from the Indian Ocean side. Well, both applications will be there. In fact, I cannot put a finger. I personally feel, yes, where the land battle is taking place, we have to protect our mm -hmm. assets. The geographical assets have to be protected. That's the most important. So that, of course, it will be applied there. Bakshi sir, what next for DRDO? Looking at the way they are really doling out uh, uh, inventory for the armed forces, sky indeed is the limit. What next do you think for DRDO? You see, I would be very happy if DRDO makes successfully develops the engine for a fighter aircraft and of course for the space vehicle. We should not depend on the foreign technology for engines. Mm -hmm. That is what my first priority would be. You know, we had already made an aircraft called HF-24. I hope you know that. Correct. You're not born then. That aircraft was cleared for Mac 2.6. Mm -hmm. No aircraft in Indian inventory is cleared for that speed. The, F, the, the wind tunnel test was done at 2.6 because we did not have the engine. And of course, our mental attitude was more prone to take away, pick up the foreign suppliers and all. So we were not very happy building up our own HF-24. Let me tell, speak the very truth. It is a bitter truth. It is us Indians who have to be faulted for dropping the HF-24. Mm -hmm. This attitude has to change. Now, because then I can see the engines and of course, aircraft will come up. Aircraft we are building, we can make more aircrafts. Our designers are good. We can get designers. But the engine is the main thing. Once the engine comes, and once the anti-missile missile comes, comes, oh, we are sitting pretty. That's what the first requirement is, and the most important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, many thanks, uh, Praful Bakshi sir, for joining us and for shedding light on how HSTDV has uh, successfully undergone a test. It is indeed a big day for uh, the Indian Armed Forces, for DRDO, and of course for the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative, a step in the right direction when it comes to ensuring that our defense forces are a little more Atmanirbhar. But yes, as uh, 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 the, the Wing Commander rightly pointed out, there is a lot more that is needed on the ground to ensure that uh, we, uh, we are uh, prepared for the worst. Uh, Bakshi sir, you wanted to add something else? Uh, kindly go ahead, sir. Yes, 
Yes, I was telling you that we have to now think in not only think, we can think, in, we have to think in terms of the anti-satellite system. Right. Please understand, in the space, the satellite has, there are satellites which are commercial, there are satellites which are com for communication, there are satellites which are hostile. We have to now think this application will go into the shooting down of the hostile satellites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is anti-satellite warfare. We have to do it. And that, because that, China, Baksisa, and that seems to be the future because I had asked you uh, something related to this as to whether it could transcend into space. So we're looking at ensuring that uh, hostile satellites are shot down. Do you see that as the next kind of a modern warfare where uh, we're really yes. fighting satellite versus satellite? Yes, satellite versus satellite is a warfare which is very much in order. And we are actually capable of it. Let's not shy away in the next, probably you'll see it in the next 10 years mm -hmm. that we will be doing, we will be thinking of that. We'll successfully be doing it because I'll tell you the satellites, what can they do? The, you, have, you have heard of EMP factor, electromagnetic pulse factor. Mm -hmm. Now, if the uh, uh, nuclear weapon is or even one half a megaton or one megaton is blasted at 200 kilometers over any city. The well, next three to four hundred square kilometers will be needed. Is all neutralized from the electronic point of view. Everything goes. That sort of a thing we have to watch out for. Then cyber application of cyber in this MM missile. We have to develop the anti-cyber system within this missiles, a suite, so that the, these cannot be cybered and neutralized. That also has to be looked into. The total military application will go a long way. Cyber is one very important thing which we have to do. Then, of course, monitoring the development, looking beneath the surface of the sea, all these things, the survey, all these applications will also come within these missile technology. But, but most important always will be the military application. But it doesn't really stop at that. Once again, many thanks, uh, Praful Bakshi, sir, for joining us and uh, for uh, sharing uh, with us your thoughts on uh, the new development coming in from uh, the DRDO. They've successfully tested the HSTDV. And yes, as you just heard it from uh, uh, the wing commander right there, uh, it is not just about ensuring that the military is equipped with this particular vehicle. It transcends beyond defense uh, uh, needs. It goes into space. It also ensures that you're able to really uh, uh, defend our ZEVs when it comes to a kind of a cyber attack so yes quite a few uses right there and uh, it is indeed just the beginning uh, the wing commander says another two to three years we may as well procure these uh, uh, hypersonic uh, uh, vehicles and that is when the defense forces would eventually get it so yes it is indeed a beginning and uh, a step in the right direction given the fact that this is completely made in india indigenously made so yes, uh, that's all I have for you in this brief interaction. If you've liked the information that we've shared with you, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Newsline on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.